I'm recording this so that we can... Antonio decided not to use his video and I don't know whether Sabine can hear or see us. Allow record. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, um, hopefully she'll let us know. Um, hmm. Sabine is for the first time in Zoom, so she's not used to the, um, to the software and anything like that. So I'll try to reach her on Facebook on the other side so okay. that we can uh, find a way that she could join us. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Hey, Antonio. Buongiorno. Hello. Buongiorno. Buongiorno, Antonio. <laughs> grazie, grazie. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm new to Zoom. I, I don't oh. know. I, I've been Don't using mind. Zoom for three okay. years and, I, and I got it wrong. <laughs> so I'm okay. sorry. I apologize, guys. That, that's, a, that's a relief for me. What a waste of your time. I apologize. No, oh. no. Don't okay. need to. Thanks. All right. I, I, I'm recording this in case anybody else finds it interesting. So I'll put it on the Facebook page as well. Quite a that, good idea. If that's good for you guys, then it's okay with me too. Yes, it's super good for me. Yeah. I agree. So, um, shall we start? Yes. Yes, please. <laughs> okay. Um, so, okay, I'm, I'm going to minimize the, the camera view. So, I'm not going to be looking at you guys because I want to be able to see my Photoshop screen. Um, okay. So, I cannot see you guys at the moment, but you can probably see my icon and you can probably see my screen. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, fantastic. So right now what I've done is I've, I've just set up a, a, a canvas on Photoshop. As you can see, um, can you see these little black areas on the side here? Yes. Yep. All right, that's because all I did was I set up, I, I used a default, I set up an A4. Now, A4 is not great for when you're projecting to an audience, right? Because obviously... Um, you want your entire screen to be seen by the audience. Okay. So, um, okay, wait, let me actually backtrack. Um, I've set up a miniature um, schedule here, uh, uh, some, some minutes for us. Um, so six points, and, and we can change that if necessary. So the first thing is setting up the canvas. The second thing is using Adobe CC libraries. Okay. The third thing is preparing for a gig. In other words, mapping your screen out. Uh, so, so setting up what you think the talk will involve. So there might be five topics. So you want five areas on your screen. We'll, we'll look at that. Setting up your canvas, not your screen. The fourth Something point, we sketch notice know. <laughs> yes. The fourth point is during the gig, using smart objects, which I think is the point of this whole, this whole conversation because um, other, other software doesn't use smart objects. But I want to show you how amazing and useful smart objects are. Great. The uh, fifth thing is setting up Photoshop using keyboard shortcuts in particular. And then the sixth okay. thing is whatever comes up. So maybe, maybe some questions will come up. So uh, does, does that kind of sound good for you? Yes, yes. Especially yeah. because I'm, I'm like uh, intrigued by these uh, keyboard shortcuts because uh, on Surface Book, you, I have no keyboard. Yes, <laughs> yes. So I'm curious to know how, how you handle this. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, are you able to see my, my, my little icon? Yes. All right, that's my, my keyboard. Um, I use a, a Logitech k810 and oh, i strongly okay. recommend this keyboard um you can probably see um in in can you see it's glittering it has backlight so, so yes wow which means in the dark when you're in like a room you can actually mm -hmm. see what's on your keyboard and it switches Clever. off if your hand isn't near it so mm -hmm. and it's and it's tiny you can see how small this is mm -hmm. it's the right size for me um but but we can talk about that uh, Later, yeah. in the next in the next thing. So let's get back to point number one: setting up the canvas. Okay. Uh, okay. So so very quickly, briefly, uh, there are some people who believe that 
the audience should not be able to see the canvas, the toolbars, all of those things, okay? Mm -hmm. And partially that's right, and partially it's also um, a bit of a misconception. Um, it doesn't matter what the audience sees, as long as the audience believes that you are a real entity doing real live work. So the more, the more live you are, the more present you are in the room, the more able they are to understand that this drawing that they're seeing on the screen is coming from a live human being, the better it is for the event. Yeah. Okay, and I'm, I'm busy doing my master's at Wits University on this topic. And uh, before we started the session, I was just busy doing some number crunching for my, for my statistics and my experiments. Um, engagement okay. is dramatically increased. Yes. When, when we're live and when the audience knows we're live. Okay, mm -hmm. so just so you know that. However, having said that, Photoshop makes it possible for you to, um, for you to do something interesting with view, sorry, window, um, arrange. I just want to show this to you just because. Um, what have I done now? Sorry, one, one moment. Let me just get this thing. Uh, you can't see this. The, the zoom, item, zoom thing is, is in my space. Okay, there we go. Can you see a little, can you see um, the page is small on my screen right now where it says setting yes. up the canvas? Yes. Okay. Um, can you see my mouse moving um, over yes. untitled 125%? Okay, what I did was I used w window, arrange, new window for untitled one. I clicked that and it created okay. this separate window. Now I can drag this window to anywhere I want. So I can put it on the screen, on the screen here, or okay. I can put it, if I've got a second monitor, I can put it on the second monitor. If I've got a video projector attached to my computer right now, I can output that to, I can, I can use the video projector, the Beamer, to show just this screen. Ah, okay. okay. So, now, so I'm gonna keep both screens on the page for you so you can just see what, I'm, what, I'm, what, what, what points I'm making here. I'm now right. working on the big layer, okay? Yeah. So mm -hmm. watch, I'm gonna zoom, plus, plus, so now I'm zoomed in on the word Adobe on my, mm -hmm. yes. but on the output screen, which would be attached to the video projector, it's mm -hmm. just the same size. So, so just so you can see, I'm, I'm going to draw something. I'm just going to write something. Uh, let's see. F11. I'm just going to, oops. What's going on? Oh, that's off. Okay. So can you see I'm painting some yeah. pink? And can you see that the pink appeared on the other screen? Yes. Great job. Can you see that? Yes. yes. All right. So I just mentioned this because some people are fanatical about not showing their process. And mm -hmm. that might be you. So if that's the case, then you have an option with, with Photoshop. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if any of the other um, um, pieces of software allow this, but Photoshop does. Um, I'm not a fan of that method. I want people to be able to see what I'm doing so that they know that this thing is live and that they are participating in the live creation of the notes that they're going to be using. So that's my, that's my thing. Let's get back to setting up the canvas. So all I did was I set up a, an A4 canvas when I said new. So with Photoshop, you go create new. And I've got an A4 here. I make it portrait. I mean, a landscape. I go create. And now watch what we do. We go image. Oh, we don't image size. I want you to notice the pixel size there. So I've got it in pixels. It's 300 DPI, 300 pixels per inch. 
dots per inch. Um, it's 3,500 pixels wide. It's 2,500 pixels wide, um, high, roughly. If you've got any dimension under 2,000, then you've got a very low resolution image and it's not going to be very good for printing later. Okay. So A4 is fine. Okay, so just so you know, A4 at 300 DPI is going to be excellent for printing later. A4 at 300 DPI will print an A an A0 poster produced by us adequately. There won't be much blurring, it'll be fine. I've done quite a lot of these. Um, if you are nervous, you can take your maximum dimension up to about 4,000 pixels. Okay. That should be fine. Yes, you have a question? I'd like to know whether this is part of the normal Photoshop packages because I never knew that there would be the ability to uh, paint in Photoshop. I just knew that for um, Photoshopping of, of pictures. So that's completely new for me. And if I buy Photoshop, I'll have that within or how does it yeah, work? This, this is all completely standard for Photoshop. Photoshop has all of this built in. Um, I also had that same thinking when I first started and I used something called Art Rage back in the old days. Yes. And okay. um, that's a lovely package, but it's not useful for this. Um, okay. Although it can be, I mean, it depends. It's got beautiful layer control. It's got amazing, you can, do, you can do almost all of the things you need to do, but it's not very fast and it's not useful. It doesn't have smart objects. It doesn't have library objects, which Photoshop does. But it's the same with Sketchbook Pro, which I use. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I've, I've used Sketchbook Pro as well, and I don't like it at all. I, I, it's very slick, but it doesn't do what I need it to do. So, yeah, it's great. I I love mean, it. <laughs> but I do, just use it on tablet. I don't use it on the PC. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, all of the stuff, all of these things that I'm going to be talking about are, are principles. So you can use them for pretty much anything. So... What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to resize um, this, this thing. So um, let's just put it, uh, I've created a, a layer above my background layer so that I can do whatever I want to do. But now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go control naught. Um, do any of you use an Apple or, or anything? Do you need me to say command naught when I say control naught? Hmm. No, if you're an Apple, yeah, I, I, I have Windows, so I, I... okay. <laughs> so <laughs> Control Naught zooms me to fill, zooms my canvas to fill the screen. Okay, now I'm going to use the the letter C. So okay, before I do that, let me just go. Okay, so Control Naught equals zoom fill. Okay, C equals crop. Okay, so it's my C key. So, so, so what I'm showing you now just is when you're setting up for projecting, you want your canvas to fill this middle area, this, this area, this, this drawing area. So can you see I've stretched it out and it's now filling the area. I'm going to press enter. And now my canvas is the size of the whole screen. So I'm going to minimize that. I'm just going to add a solid color to this, just red. <laughs> edited. Okay. Um, because uh, I don't know if you can see this here. In fact, let me just do this for you. Uh, G. Uh, can you see when, when I when I changed the, when I cropped it, it, it added this section to my canvas. Yes, yes. Section. So you pretty much want to change it. You you, you change the color using this this um, adjustment layer over here. Solid color. Are, are you able to see what I was doing there? Yes. yes. Okay. And you can make that any color you want. And that will be, that will not, 
that, that will not, um, that will stay, that, that will fill it, that's an infinite size. So whatever size you change your canvas to, that, that, will, that will change with it. So I'll show you. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. yes, yes. All right. So I'm just going to stretch it. Um, I'm, I'm going to just change my canvas back to um, to fill the screen. Control naught C. So can you see? I'm just taking it to the edge of the screen there. I'm letting go. I'm pressing enter. Okay. okay. My, my writing's disappeared because I, I I have my crop set to delete anything that's not on the canvas. Sometimes you want to remove that. Sometimes you want to change that. So I've just switched it off now. Okay. Um, uh, when you're working with stuff where you where you like just working really fast, you probably want that thing to be off. You don't want to cut what's not on the screen because later you're probably going to want it. Stuff happens in the heat of the moment uh, when you're working and you don't want to mess <laughs> things up. So okay. So this is point one of of our of our agenda. Okay, so point two is using Adobe CC libraries. Hmm. So let me show you this. Can you see this? Um, there's an infinite symbol. Uh, let me just put a uh, brush. Um, can you see this? this yes. Symbol? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The CC symbol. That's my CC library. So under window, you'll see something called libraries. And you want mm -hmm. to tick it. Okay, when you tick it, this thing appears. And what's in it, when you initially have it, is pretty much nothing. But you can populate it with whatever you want. So I've got a whole bunch of libraries here. So one called My Library, one called Stuff, one called Investec, that's a client, Household Goods, there's a television. Okay. okay. Put those boots in my. On my on my screen, there's a television aerial. So I'm going back. So to these are visuals you did, or are they done by uh, Adobe? Oh no no, these are things I've done. Okay. So these these are this is part of why this is such a useful system. So I'm preparing my canvas for the first time, right? So let's so let's say I'm uh, I've got a gig tomorrow. I'm setting up my canvas. The first thing I'm going to do is drag this into my canvas. Oh, cool. Okay, I'm going to pop it in there. I'm going to resize it. Whatever I want to do with it. This is super high resolution. I can use it anywhere I want, whenever I want. So that is this object that you can see on the top of the layer palette right here. Uh, I don't know if you can see my mouse moving. Yes, yes. Where it says, Roy, I engage Ent delegates. Now, you'll see, if you look at all of those layers on that, on that palette, the top one has a funny little cloud next to it on the bottom corner. Mm -hmm. And you see that icon there? Yes. All right, the others don't. So layer one underneath it has no, has no cloud. That cloud means that this image lives in the cloud. Okay, so this image is saved not on my computer, but on the internet, in the Adobe CC libraries. Mm -hmm. So if somebody steals my computer today, tomorrow I can get a new one and all of my library items will be available to me to use. Oh. Okay. And they drag and drop. Pure luxury. Say again for me. Pure luxury. <laughs> yes, it is luxury, but um, it happened to me. My computer did get stolen, and everything I was working on was in the Adobe libraries. So I was able to. I, I had a weekly um, newspaper cartoon that I was doing, and I would have been completely screwed if all of my assets had been removed with my computer. So luckily, yeah. luckily I had. Well, I also use um, Dropbox. So well. do I. So yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's important. You have to have things like that. Oh, really? 
It's, well, especially in South Africa, yes. <laughs> but now, so, so now I'm going to show you quickly. I'm, I'm going to, I'm on, I'm in the palettes layer. I'm going to double click on that icon, that Roy Smart Object thumbnail. And now watch what happens. Can you see it's opened another dialog box? Yeah. So it's opened a, a, an entirely new image. And Without background. Can you see it's got all of these layers here? So I'm going to switch one or two layers off just so you can see. There, my, my portraits disappeared. Uh -huh. um, my text has disappeared. If you look at this text where it says Roy, Blumen, Roy at RoyBlumenthal.com, I'm moving my mouse over it. You can see it's also got a little icon, a little cloud icon next to it. That's mm -hmm. because it's also a smart object. Ah. And one of the reasons it's a smart object, uh, I see it's, it isn't linked for some reason. Let's just see what happens. Oh, uh, some font isn't working. So resolve fonts. No, I can't resolve that font. But regardless, um, I just want to show you something very interesting. You can see that these details are portrait shaped, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just switching off the portrait and on the landscape. So my, my details can, just at the flick of a button, I can change my entire layout to landscape instead of portrait. Because if I save this, Watch what happens to my to my thing. Can you see that? Yes, yes. That's changed, and that's because I saved it in this smart object here. So I don't want that right now. So let's forget that. So save this, and now I'm back to to normal. Oh, I want to show you what happened. Let's pop some blue in here. So I'm going to save this, Control S. I'm going to go back to our document. Can you see it's now suddenly got a blue background? Yes. Okay. And that I can change any time. So here I remove the blue background. It's got a transparent background now. Control Save. Let's go back to our document. There it is. So so now, let's say you don't want that to happen, which many people wouldn't want to happen. So I'm going to switch that off. I'm going to, I'm going to go to my, uh, to my, um, sorry, control zero. I'm going to drag this over, but I'm going to press the alt key. So I'm, I'm pressing alt as I speak, and I'm dragging this across. Now, from what you can tell, Everything seems to be the same, right? Mm -hmm. But now watch this. Can you see we're on my, the working document? I've got all of my layers open there now. Now I don't have a cloud object anymore. This is not a cloud object. This is a normal object that I can edit and do anything I want with, and it won't change anything in my, in my CC library. Okay. This will make sense one day when you're actually using this stuff, but I'm just mentioning it because it's, it's kind of important. It's, it's useful. Mm -hmm. But, um, mm. okay, so, so let me, let me um, just pop this into the corner. That's how it normally appears. We're preparing our canvas. So, so what we've done is we've used a smart object. We've set up our canvas roughly to, for roughly the size to be projected. I'm going to close this down. I'm going to remove this text that I wrote. Now I'm going to control D. I'm on the colorful layer. I'm going to use a little Adobe plugin called Adobe Paper Texture Pro. I'm going to press it. And now miracles are going to happen. Watch this. I've ticked it, applying this as a texture to my canvas. Mm. <laughs> Are you able to see that? I'm yes. Zooming in a bit so you can see it. So with just a single color, 
and one of these textures, I can switch it off and I can try a different one. I have a unique canvas. See that? Yeah. And, and that's using the overlay mode. I'm going to use different modes now. So, so this is normal. I'm using blending modes. I don't know if you can see my moving cursor right now. Yes. It's going over blend modes normal. I'm just using my down arrow to change the blend mode. So we're flicking through, seeing what the various blend modes do. And each blend mode does something completely different. Or sometimes does something completely different. And then you basically just stop when you see something you like. Like that. And if you don't like that, you can also change the original color. So you can make your background unique. So Great. That's part of what I do. Next thing I do is I will draw a logo for the company that I'm working around. So let's just do a quick, so let's say logo. So I'll take their logo and I will repaint it myself so that it looks completely unique for the event. I'm just doing some nonsense right now just to mess around and make it look. Let's just mm -hmm. do something. G. Okay, layer two. I, I'm, let's call that. Whoops. Roy, do you use any um, graphic pad or how do you draw now? Not my well, mouse. I'm, I'm using a, a Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. Okay. So I'm using my, my, my stylus on my screen. Okay. So just so you see, I've, I've, I've renamed this logo line. I'm now going to call this logo color. I've made a new layer underneath. I'm just quickly going to add some color to this lovely logo that I've designed. Looks like this, um, this web connection is making my computer ultra slow, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so, so just so you can see what I've done here, I've got a color layer underneath my, my line layer. Can you see I'm switching it off? Switching it yes. off. Now, I've selected both. I'm pressing the group button down at the bottom. Sorry, my mouse sometimes double clicks. So this group, where it says group one, I will now rename that logo. Okay. Now, what I'll do, let's, let's just, I'm using a keyboard shortcut to add a drop shadow underneath it. Can you see that the drop shadow does just appeared? Yes. I'm going to make it stronger so that you can see it more clearly. Okay. So there's, there's our logo. Now, let's just go back to our agenda. Mapping the screen. Okay, we're going off to number four. We're going to smart objects now, even though it's, uh, we're skipping one briefly. I'm turning this logo. I'm, 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 so now there's the icon, which is that little folder, and then there's logo. I'm right-clicking on the right-hand section where it says logo, and I'm looking for convert to smart object. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now notice logo has stopped being a folder and it's now got a little icon with the it looks like a folder with some kind of another folder over it and it says smart object thumbnail now i want to show you something very interesting and amazing about a smart object so this is going to blow your mind and this is why photoshop for me just rules i'm changing the size of this no wait before i do that i'm going to go control j I've created a copy of that. I'm going to make it into just an object. So this bottom, this bottom one here, let me just write on it. Uh, this is raster. A raster image is a bitmap image. 
All right, so I want you to know, I want you to take note of this raster image. Can you see, if I zoom in, can you see the details? Yes. The blue, the, 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 the furriness of that paint. And it's identical to the furriness of the paint on the logo above it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to take the, I'm going to take both of these objects. I'm selecting both. I'm going to make them really small. I'm going to pop them into the top right cor corner over there. Okay. Just want you to look at them. The bottom one. Can you see? Can you see the jaggedness? Can you see that it's pixelated? Yes. That's because Emily. it is now a very small object. Okay. This is also pixelated because it's a very small object. And that's the resolution of this particular page. But now watch this. I'm going to select both of them. I'm going to make them big again. Okay. And I'm going to take this raster one. I'm going to put it near the other one so that we can compare. Can you see the difference? Oh, yes. yes. Okay. Heavy difference. So you can see that this one here that I'm moving is mm -hmm. very blurry. Mm -hmm. That's because it was a tiny image that I expanded into something big, much bigger than it has any information to recreate properly. So it estimates and it simply makes it the same shape and size with the same color roughly. So mm -hmm. we can do this again. I'm going to do it again. I'm copying both. I'm selecting both. I'm, I'm going to resize them. I'm going to make them tiny again. Oh, oh it didn't take the other one. So let me undo that. Control T. Make them both tiny. So now I've committed that. I'm going, I'm selecting them both again. I'm making them both huge. Now you're going to see how much worse it is. So this is even blurrier now. Now you can even see on the word raster how terrible that is. Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost, and you can see funny little dark yellow and bright yellow. There's gray around the lettering even. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, hold on one sec, guys. Uh, Jen, another about 20 minutes? Is that okay? Oh, okay. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so, so, guys, or, does that give you a little bit of insight into what the, the power is of, the, of this, uh, this smart object? Yes, yes. And uh, for what I know, uh, you cannot edit a smart object directly in the canvas, but you have to enter the inside the smart object to yeah, edit it. Yeah, that's one of my biggest complaints about it, but it doesn't really matter because um, you're only going to be using the editing when you're tidying things up later after a gig. Basically, that's how I do it. So I'm going to double click on this logo. Oh, wait, before I do that, I'm going to do something else. I'm just going to co copy it again. V. Okay, I'm going to double click it. It's now done what you said, Antonio. It's opened it up as a separate object, which I can now edit and do whatever I want with, right? So let's do this. Control J. Um, move it slightly and give it a blend mode. I just want to make an apparent change to it without doing too much work. Mm -hmm. so I probably exclude will do the trick. Difference, no, too much. Exclusion, there, yeah, that'll, that'll do what I needed to do. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to close it. 
and now do you see both of our logos changed? Which we don't want, right? <laughs> Always. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do, but we can revert this, we can undo it. We can open that logo copy. No, let's close it, control W. Let's, now I'm gonna right click on logo, on, on the smart object, so they're both smart objects, they're the same smart objects, I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna say, new smart object via copy. I'm gonna edit that. So let's just change that color. Um, let's go solid color, blue. I'm gonna do something interesting here for you. Um, can you see my, the, there's a hand icon above the blue, the blue thing? Yes. I'm going to press my Alt key and I'm gonna slowly move my cursor down. Do you see that the cursor changed to a downward arrow? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna let go. Sorry, I'm gonna click and let go. What it's done is it's made that blue only apply to whatever pixels are on the image below it. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? So I'm going to yes. undo it. And then you can see blue is applied to the whole canvas. Now blue is only applied to that image. I'm going to turn the blending mode on so that something else, so that we see different colors going on. I don't know what I've just done. Uh, switch that off. Mm -hmm. um, so let's just get a nice there. That's a good color. I'm going to say control save, control W. Now you'll notice that the logos, they're different. So my logo copy, that's the one I just worked on, is different to the, to the two others. All right. So, so we now <laughs> have two different smart objects. Yes, well, I now have two smart, smart objects. This one and this one are the same smart object. Mm -hmm. And this one here is a different smart object. So mm -hmm. if I edit this smart object here, the one that, that, that we messed around with just now, um, let's just add a line to it or something. Let's just do this. Control save, control W you'll see the difference. So this version here and this version here, these are the same smart object. Yes. Whereas this one is an independent smart object. If I duplicate that, just copy it, control J, um, it, will be, it, it, it will be one object that is repeated several times. If I say, new smart object by a copy, then it'll be an independent one. So you need to know that at some point. But now, now we're going to go into the, the gig. So let's look at, look at our agenda quickly, preparing, mapping the screen. Aha, yes. Okay. So we're, we've got a gig tomorrow morning, right? We know it's going to be an hour long. There's going to be an introduction. There's going to be um, a keynote by somebody. There's going to be a session, a workshop session with a whole bunch of people. And there's going to be a, a sort of a concluding session, right? So, yep. so we kind of working the visual facilitation route. We know what we want. So we kind of know, or we decide, or you know, whatever, however you want things designed, you decide how you want it to be. So you can sort of say, all right, I want, okay, I want a headline in here. So this is going to be my headline area. And my day is going to, I'm going to want stuff there, want stuff there, want stuff there, want stuff there during the, during the event. But I don't want anybody to see this. So what do I do? I can... I can really just do something as trivial as turn the opacity really low. Okay, I can see it, you can see it, but when this is on a, on a projector, it's, it's not that visible. 
but I can mm -hmm. do something even more. I can use Gaussian blur to blur it. That's too much blur because now I can't see it at all. Let's just do something like this. Too much. That's enough. So when I look at it, that's a bit random, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, let, let's just pretend that, that this is adequate for our needs. Now, we leave this somewhere. We leave this on our screen, probably at the top. And now we start working. Session one starts and we start visual facilitating. We know that this is the shape we want to fill, right? So we know we want to use our full screen and we want to use that shape because we can see that shape in the background. So you don't have to draw this, but you, you know that that's what you're doing. Okay, you work full screen and now you start doing your session. So the person introduces themselves, they start making points, they start saying interesting things, you draw a little pie chart because that's what the person wants or whatever, okay, and you know, you do what you need to do. And you add colors and whatever it is you want to do, boom, boom, boom. Okay, da, da, da. So I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to... You don't need to. <laughs> yeah. But, but what I do want you to see is, is that it's important that you have a, it, it, for conceptually for, for our purposes, it's important for you to know um, that the layers are important. Mm -hmm. Because this is the, one of the keys to working with Photoshop that the others don't allow is exactly what I'm going to show you. Sorry, my machine has slowed down unbelievably. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> we are far away. Wow, we it's crawling. That's bizarre. Okay, anyway. So so this is session one. I'm I'm just waiting for the this hourglass to stop turning. Maybe it's better for you to change like brush to uh, <laughs> like, lighter one because this is maybe it's heavy and it's yeah it takes long to process yeah. with the streaming and Yes. All right. But um, so I'm going to use a lasso tool. So, so going back to that shape. So this is session one. I'm just mm -hmm. going to fill it with a color for us to G. Boom. Okay. Control D. I am now going to select those three layers. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say convert to smart object. Now it's a smart object. I'm going to name it session one or whatever I want to name it. I'm going to resize it to fit in my layout. Okay. I'm going to switch it off. I'm going to start my session two, which is the, this one here. Right. So I know what it's, what it's supposed to look like, what shape it's supposed to fill. It's this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, let's just fill that up with, with, um, with a color to make it obvious. Okay. I'm going to do some stuff in it, whatever. Okay. Some other person, they also said a billion things. Okay. I'm going to, Add some, let's use our lasso tool again. G. Uh, this lasso tool can go like this. That can be G. All right, so this is session two. So I select session two. I right click. I convert to smart object. I call it session two, I change the size, whoops, to fit my layout. 
I switch it off. And we go through our whole day doing these things. At the end of the day, when we want to do a replay for when we want to talk our clients through these, we just switch those things back on. Mm. And they're the right size. We can switch our guide layer off. They're the right size. They're the right shape. We have a final layout of our poster that we can work with. And mm. at the end of the session, when we're at home and we're making corrections, we double click on session one and we go, okay, I hated the way those eyes looked. So let's just fix that. Boom. All right. You see, you see where I'm going with this, right? Yes. You make your corrections, you do whatever has to be done. Let's pop a drop shadow under that. Boom. Control save, control W. Control S is save, control W is close window. And there we've, We've, we're at the same resolution that we worked at, which is the full size of our screen. The audience has been able to see what we're doing as we do it. And we have lost no resolution. And these images can be, can be changed. So if the client wants their portrait and they don't like this background, we can save this as a PNG file. So we can file, export, export as... A PNG. Do you know what a PNG is? Mm, yes. It has a transparent background. So when mm -hmm. I transport, when I export it, it doesn't have any background and I can drop it onto a PowerPoint file, for instance, if I'm a client. And my background, my client background will remain intact and it won't have any funny colors interrupting with it, interrupting it. So it has no background. So I can do that as a, as a value add for my client. You see that? Mm -hmm. And if I save it here, just as, a, as, as it stands, there, there it is with no background. You see that? Mm -hmm. So, so that, that there, that little thing there, this, this um, draw, um, convert to smart object, make the size of your canvas, uh, 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 on your layout, switch to invisible, do your next session. That's one of the key parts of, of why you want to make Photoshop CC part of your workflow or for me. And the other thing is, remember that logo that I made for the client? I don't remember where I put it. Um, where is our client logo? Mm. Oh, I can't remember. That silly little, maybe it was here. No. No, no. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I deleted it. That fake logo that we created. Um, yes, yes. Uh, let's say this is it. So if I, if I really, if I think this is our logo, let's call it logo. And I know I'm going to be working with this client again in the future. I open up my creative cloud library. I drag my object into it and uh, oh, did it do nothing? Could not use the move tool, what? All right, I'm, uh, okay, let me just choose a different library stuff. So I'm just gonna try and drag it in here. Can you see under, uh, can you see there's, there's a cursor moving? Yes, yes. I'm dropping, now it should be appearing of course, it's not doing it now suddenly for some reason. I have no idea why. Let's try this. What? It should be as simple as dropping it into here. All right, I have no idea why this is not cooperating. Mm, but, but it should. I wonder if it's my bandwidth. I'm so maybe, sorry, Charles. Um, yeah, maybe. Maybe you, you um, must click on the plus. Maybe I'm not clicking. I'm on the plus in the, in the picture. Oh, no, I um, can't click. Oh, there it is. Okay. It was something to do with bandwidth. Um, yeah. 
So I've stuck that in my library. So let's say I stuck it in my, I put it like, let's call it a company, whatever. I could create a library for my company, for the company that it's with. Um, and then this can be ready for, for me to use in whatever gig I use again with them. All I do is I drag it across. Oops, I've done, uh, I've moved something else. Oh, now I've double clicked it by mistake. Um, all I want to do is show you how it works and it's not cooperating. All right. You basically, oh, well, you saw me do it with, with my, with my logo, yes, right? Yes, yes. Basically drag it from the library onto your canvas and it has all of the layers intact. It's, it's high resolution and all of that stuff. And then you can mm -hmm. edit it if you want. Uh, if you right click, you can also say place linked or place layers. So let's just place layers. There's, so there it's done what I did if I, if I used the alt key. Mm -hmm. So I can change that as I see fit. Oh, by the way, did you see how big it was? So it placed it at the original size that I drew it at and in the original position as well. Yeah. Okay. So, so there's our, our thing for our next client meeting with, with the same bunch. <coughs> see what else was on this agenda? Setting up Photoshop keyboard shortcuts. Okay. So Antonio, you were you were talking about um, your Surface Book not having keyboard. Does does yeah, not actually, have a keyboard? Do you not use the keyboard? Do you sort of just close it down and and make yes, it? Yes, yes. Okay, um, it's probably a better idea for you to work with it in the upright position or to get yourself an easel that you put the tablet on and and allow the keyboard to be um, in front of you, or you get one of these Logitech. Or an equivalent, you, you know, the, the, whatever keyboard you get. Um, uh, yes, work. actually, I was looking for a Bluetooth uh, keyboard. Uh, actually, I was looking the uh, either the Microsoft foldable one because it's really small and you can fold it, okay. or the Logitech K380. Maybe uh, even even um, smaller than yours, but uh, I think it. Hasn't backlight? No, it hasn't. Um, I, I've researched every keyboard there is, and for me, the Logitech K8110 is pretty much the only one that I will use. Um, and unfortunately, they seem to have stopped making them. So you can buy them on Amazon, and you can buy them at various places. But um, it's a great keyboard. This, this is for me. There's nothing better than this. Um, there, there are, you can buy mechanical keyboards that are backlit, but they aren't necessarily Bluetooth and they make a hell of a lot of noise. Um, yeah. One of the good things about this is that it's a silent keyboard. So, you know, when you're in a conference and you're working on your computer, you really don't want something going click, 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 because <laughs> it really annoys people. So, uh, you know, you've got to be careful about things like that. Mm -hmm. But, um, if you can find these, buy a couple of them because they you soon you're not going to be able to get them at all. <laughs> but yeah, this is <laughs> okay. Awesome. okay. Um, no, I actually I, I saw I asked you uh, how you how you do because I saw someone use uh, using a software that uh, um, um, simulates the um, the yes. bu button on the, of the Cintiq. Of the Wacom yeah. on the I've screen. I've seen that and, and I've and I've thought about it, but I really like my I, I my kind of my muscles know where the keyboard is. Where yeah, the, where you the just move are. your I fingers. <laughs> yeah, I also yeah. I, I've got two things. I, I because I'm using a Wacom, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have about ten different keyboard shortcuts that I can use on the side of my machine. So quite a lot of the things that you've seen me do. So let me just, uh, in fact, okay. So you can see I'm on layer one. I'm going to press one of my buttons and it makes a second layer. I'm going to go just down to say, ready full. I'm going to press another button. that's going to make a, a layer underneath that layer. Okay. I don't know if you were able to see that. 
can't remember what my middle thing does. Oh yeah, that's what it does. So my middle thing, my middle button, let's just show it to you. Let's show you what it does. If I select these two layers here, my middle button, oh, no, because it's double clicking with my mouse. My middle button now merges those two layers. Mm -hmm. So I've just decreased a layer there. Do you see that? Yes. Um, what's my, my top button chooses my pen, my line pen, my bottom button chooses my color brush, my middle button puts a shadow under everything. So let, let's actually just show you that. The top button. That's how you, you were able to put the shadow so quickly. <laughs> yes, yes. It's comfortable, isn't it? <laughs> Say again. It's quite comfortable, isn't it? Yes. Putting on your shadows as fast as that. That's yeah, and that is because I've set up a bunch of actions, Photoshop actions, that allow me to do various things that I like to do fast. So ah. um, let's see. Here's something. Can you see? There's a there's a folder here in my actions called Roy's shortcuts. So the one is color brush. That's F11. So if I press F11, so, so I'm just going to, can you see my cursor above the word Photoshop in Roy's Photoshop workflow? Yes. I'm pressing F11 right now. Can you see it just changed to a brush? Yes. Yeah. And can you see the brush is selected in my tool panel here? Mm -hmm. Okay, so F10, can you see it also changed? Yes. Let me show you what that does. So I'm just pressing F11 again. I'm choosing a different color. And you see I've drawn red on the pink. F10 mm -hmm. is a smudge tool. <laughs> mm. Okay, so wow. I can smudge whenever I want. Um, what does F9 do? I can't remember. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, it seems to be a different pen. Oh, it's, a, it's an eraser. <laughs> I, I stopped <laughs> using it for some reason. It's, a, it's a, a small eraser. So that's for me to be able to very quickly choose the eraser button without needing any, any hassles. <laughs> any raise. Um, so, so those actions, those are just actions. And I've assigned those actions to my F, my F keys. Oh, there we go. Erase small is F9. <laughs> Control F9 is erase large. Mm -hmm. F2, you know that whole thing of making a smart object? If I just press my F2 key, I make whatever I've selected into a smart object. Mm -hmm. Down here it says masterize, shift F2. That, is, that con converts whatever I, I've got selected into one raster layer which is great. It means that I, I, I sort of merge everything and, and, and I convert a, a smart object to a raster. That's if I don't want to make a change in my library and if I don't mm -hmm. care what size it is. So you set these things up and once you've set them up, they're there and then you start learning them and you use them. So because I don't like using, for instance, my, my Photoshop brush me menu. So if I choose brush, you can see over here, um, let me just click on oh, trying, to, trying to get the, the massive brush library to open. Um, preset manager. Uh, for some reason, it's not showing everything I wanted to show. I've got about a thousand brushes on my, on my computer. I literally mm -hmm. use two. I, I don't. Yeah. I, I don't use any of the other brushes except for the two that I've chosen for for, for my line work and my color work. I don't want to see mm. them. I'm not interested in them. They don't work for me. I just want these. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so when I press F11 and this comes up, I'm now going to press the right square bracket key, and I'm making the brush massive. Mm. And now you'll see how, how slow it is. Um, if I press the left right bracket key, you'll see it gets smaller. Okay. Mm. F12. 
I've set it so that it defaults to black mm. and that size. But if I want it bigger, I make it bigger. If I want it smaller, I make it smaller. And those are the things I need. I don't need anything else. Um, here's my fatty razor. And here's my thin razor. Did you see that? So, so I don't even have to think about these things. I just have them and I use them. And when, you, when you're working in a, in a gig, you really don't want to have to think about what you're choosing. You want to know, I have a line pen, I have a coloring pen, and I have these various ways of doing things. Like if I need a shadow, I just go control shift F11. Boom. There goes the shadow. Mm. If I want, I can edit it, but I don't have to edit it right now. I can edit it later when, when the gig's finished. All I want mm. is for what's on this screen here to impress my audience. Mm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yes, a lot of. <laughs> But more important than impressing the audience, what, what I care about also is adding value for the audience. So at the end of the gig, so if I were using a different piece of software and we did, where are these things? We did this stuff and, mm -hmm. we, and we actually shrank those images down and then we wanted to work with them. When they're this size, that's it. On, on normal software, if this is raster uh, as opposed to vector art, vector art is very difficult to work with live, but you can. I mean, you can use Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape or something like that where you use vector images. And a vector line is the same resolution no matter what size it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But when you work with a bitmap program, so any, any of the painting programs are bitmap. When you make something small, it's small permanently. And then you have a big lot of trouble getting it big. So if you work with smart objects the way we're doing here, you can make this big and you can, you can make it easy for yourself to edit so that you offer your client more value. Because often the client will say, ah, you know what, we really didn't want to mention, we, you know, we want this thing to be public facing, but we don't want to mention this corporate secret to the public. So can you edit that out? When you're working with tiny rasterized images like this in, an, in another piece of software, it makes it very difficult for your software to, for you to make a, a really decent edit because mm -hmm. you're committed to the size you're at. You can't make anything bigger. You can't make things much smaller because then it commits it even smaller. There's a lot of a lot of hassle to 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 using things that aren't smart objects. That's pretty much my thinking on it. Um, mm -hmm. The other way to the only way to get around that is if you make an enormous canvas to start with, and you work on a massive canvas. But you can see my my machine is a top of the range machine. This this. This is an i7, one of the fastest i7s that they made at the time. It's about a year old. It's really fast. It's got 32 gigs of RAM in it. It's huge. This, is a, this machine should not lag, but I'm working at very high resolution when I'm working in Photoshop. And even with a really high-end machine, it's lagging. So can you imagine if I had a really massive canvas, like 12,000 pixels wide even? Yeah. Now that's not even a humongous, uh, you know, 16,000 pixel canvas is a lot of canvas, but there's very few machines that will, that will really be able to deal with that, especially in a sort of portable machines. Um, mm -hmm. the, the Microsoft, um, what do you call it? Surface book wouldn't yeah. be able to deal with a 16,000 uh, uh, pixel image. It, it would just die. Um, yeah. so you've got to, you've got to balance what you've got with what you need to have. So for me, the smart object is kind of the way to do it without having to worry too much about lag. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. Um, let's go back to this, to this thing. I wonder what happened to my palettes. Roy. Yeah. I'm very sorry, but I have to quit now because I have another date. 
that's good because we're actually about to finish. And um, mm -hmm. who's talking? It was, it was absolutely fascinating. Thank you very much for your work. Oh, such a pleasure. So mm -hmm. the, the, only bit, the only bit we were going to go to was, is there anything else you want to speak about? So you probably mm -hmm. want to speak about your next date. So enjoy your next date. <laughs> <laughs> I'll Thank you very you much. <laughs> Danke. Bye. Bye. See you. See you, Bettina. So does anybody else have anything they want to say? Um, I just um, have a, um, a question about libraries. Uh, yes. Do, uh, do you need internet connection to use libraries? Um, you need an internet connection every now and again. So when you connect, when you when you start Photoshop app, what it does is it checks if your license, if your Adobe license is up mm -hmm. is up to date. Once mm -hmm. it knows that then mm. then you're free then you don't have to have a connection um, okay because um often happens for me to be like in a erasmus plus project for example for example uh yeah. in places where internet connection is like not the best in the world so very often it's difficult to to be connected this is why i ask yeah no you you, you don't what what, what Sometimes when, when anything happens like that, I use my phone. So I set up a mobile hotspot on my phone just mm -hmm. for that initial connection, if it should happen. So mm -hmm. I, I quickly connect via my phone. I make sure that's established. I switch the phone off and then it's done. So no, you don't, you don't have to have mm -hmm. a connection at all times at all. So you can work okay. with it as if it were, um, as if it were connected. As long as it's downloaded it, it's all there. Oh. So it, it lives. So it does have a local copy of everything stored. It's just mm. when you're doing things like uploading it or, you know, or, or getting something from someone else that you need the mm. connection to be active. Okay. 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 Yeah. What else? Any other, mm. any other questions? Mm. Mm. Well, I, I don't know. I just wonder because uh, maybe I'm going to uh, do my first um, graphic recording in digital, digitally. Yeah. Uh, in Roman in Romania, yes, in Romania. Okay. And so I just wanted to, yes, no, like, how do you work? Like, do you connect um, to the projector via? HDMI, do you need a table to be, because um, about the keyboard, I, I'm, I'm scared that if I don't have uh, enough space, yes. um, maybe it, it's difficult to handle like, like the, the, the tablet and the keyboard on the lap, <laughs> you know, oh. um, but uh, this, this is like logistics. The logistics are important. Um, so, so, so I have um, my machine is on. Um, let me actually try and show you. Um, I'm just lifting. So I'm portable. I don't know. Can you? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I know the mobile studio. Yeah, I know. It. All right, but I'm uh, I'm on a lap desk with all of my oh. stuff on the lap desk. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that allows me to to pretty much move this wherever I need to. So this is pretty much it's 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 um, it's a yeah, yeah. I mean, do do you travel with all that stuff? With yes. You? Yes. Mm. I, I travel with this stuff plus a lot of other stuff. So um, I carry a thirty meter HDMI cable with me at all times. Mm. Um, and I strongly recommend that you do the same because most venues, you, you know, most hotel venues or conference venues, they, they have these things, but very often the guys who, um, who work at those venues, they're very abusive of, of the, of the cable connections. And if there's one bent pin in an HDMI cable, it messes everything up and you can't get a signal properly. And uh, it, it, it has happened to me, okay, I've been doing this for about 
11 years now, and it's happened to me about 12 times, maybe 10 times, um, where I've been to a venue and they've supplied all the cabling and everything and it hasn't worked. So in the first five years, it used to be VGA cables. Those are terrible. Those, those never work. Those are, uh, uh, yeah, those, those are kind of the bulk of my problems. But um, it's happened twice with HDMI cables or three times with HDMI cables where their cable didn't work. And then I end up having to use my cable. So I rather... I, I'm one of these guys who prefers to have the resources in my pocket rather than wait for them to go and do something. So mm -hmm. I would recommend that you try and sort of be as self-contained as possible. I even carry a spare video projector with me just in case. Mm -hmm. And I ended up, I, I, I did use one. In fact, I used one in November. I had a gig in November where I had to use my projector. For whatever reason, they, oh, like, theirs was one of those wireless projectors, and I could not connect to their wireless. It mm -hmm. wouldn't let me, it wouldn't let me um, duplicate my, my screen onto their wireless. Yes. It would let well, me extend I, I, my screen, but it wouldn't let me duplicate my screen. So I just ended up yeah. using my own projector, and that was fine. <laughs> okay, maybe eventually I will have one, but now I have not, so I wish they have their own projector. <laughs> no, they, you, you, you must specify that they must have their own projector, but you, you've got to be very, very careful with, with venues. You've also got to say things like, it must be HDMI, um, and, and be prepared for them to not have HDMI. Okay, so you're going to have to buy, um, I've got a little, uh, I don't know where my gadget bag is. Oh, it's, oh, it's in my uh, it's in my gear bag. I've got a little gadget bag that has every different kind of connector, and I've got a uh, an adapter. Oh, in fact, here's my here's one of my adapters. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm buying. Uh, it's now. Uh, it should arrive like tomorrow. I had to buy like the Dell uh, dock with yeah. the both. That's the one. That's uh, brilliant. BDA. Yeah, yeah BGA, because HDMI yeah, network, BGA and HDMI and display ports, so yeah. it's everything. I mean, it it's more or less uh, eighty euros. Okay, or yeah. something. It's very expensive, but it's still, essential. You have to have it. You have to have it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, a piece of advice for you: never allow your client to give you a used USB stick. To put to, to put into your computer and transfer data onto mm. they all have viruses <laughs> uh, do yes, not let uh, it, it, I you would have be, to see them open it yeah. it has to be in a package it has to be opened you have to cut the packaging mm. open to be able to use their, <laughs> their things otherwise you must go and buy like a bunch of cheap eight gig memory sticks no. So I, I yeah, yes, yes. I, I think I'll buy some. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they can ruin your life if they if they put one of those things in. Mm, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so okay, nice. right. Yeah. What? Yeah. What you you were going to ask? No, no. I mean, I'm I'm super happy with the with the session. Actually, you you were very kind to give us <laughs> this opportunity. Sure. Uh, I know I will have like a lot of questions, but they will come later, and I, maybe I will ask in the in the in the group. Um, cool. And I'm really me, new. DM me if you want, you know. Yes. Or, yes. Or thank put, you. Or, or put a question and tag me. Yes, because it's better I, to I share will. it with everybody, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, you are so kind, Roy. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Ah, oh, uh, it's all cool. <laughs> Thank you. Grazie. <laughs> Prego. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why when when someone that it's not Italian is like says Italian words and I answer in Italian but with English accent. I don't know why. <laughs> Even if I'm Italian, for real, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like this. Yeah, we try, we try to mimic the people we're around. So. Yes, yes, this is, this is true. Yeah. Um, 
So you said that you are gonna post the recording on uh, on the group? Yeah. Yeah. I, I will download it for 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 sure. No, this this is smart object. I I mean I mean I, I use smart object because I also do graphic design and okay. editorial design, but I never thought uh, uh, about using them in this way. So it was okay. really useful. Thank you. My pleasure. Have a fantastic twenty seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you see right. you see you next time indeed have a nice day <laughs> bye bye indeed. ciao bella bye 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 <laughs> bello bella <laughs> is for girls ah, ciao bello <laughs> grazie ciao bello <laughs> ciao bello <laughs> ciao, ciao bye <laughs> bye bye